I'm going to go a little bit out of order and go ahead and start talking about resistors today as this is part of what you will be doing in lab. You'll be exposed to it in lab. It's not critical that you have 100% solid understanding going through it, but <clears throat> I do first want to talk to you about what it is. I'm going to introduce you to how we work with resistors in a circuit, and we're not going to worry about combining the circuits just yet with resistors and capacitors, but I do want to have a few fundamental ideas in hand. So what's a resistor do? I think it's more um, palatable, perhaps, if you think about what a resistor does in terms of the material it travels through, in terms of current traveling through the material, I should say. So say I have this super, super, super conductive wire that's supposed to be a wire. And it meets up with something that is not quite so conductive. And I'm just going to kind of give it this symbol for now. What do you think is going to happen as I have charge coming through here when it encounters this less conductive piece of material. Do you think that it is going to slow down? Do you think that it's going to speed up? Do you think what? Pause and think about it. So this is a really conductive wire on both sides of this thing that is not so conductive. So not so conductive, meaning it's kind of resisting the flow, if you will. And what you might hopefully see in this is that the resistor is going to, hate to be redundant, resist the flow of Q. Now let's think about how we can define this flow of Q. Well, we have a couple ways of looking at this, actually. We can look at how fast charge moves, so how fast it goes, or how much it can go, or how much can go in one thing. So take that wire, make it still super conductive, and let's make it this thick now. You can imagine if I have a really big pipe and it's super conductive, that I'm going to be able to get more charge flowing through that. So how fast it goes or how much. The way we define movement of charge is this term called current. And thankfully, current is not a word that can be terribly disconcerting because it kind of makes sense. If you think in terms of a river flowing or a stream flowing, we describe that as current. So charge moving is described as current. And it's important to keep in mind that we do have two different ways of looking at current. Because one of the more common misconceptions is that if I have a battery here and I introduce something that's going to slow things down, so this is the symbol for a resistor. If this is a 10 volt potential difference, so this is my battery source, then what that tells me is no matter how many resistors or how few resistors I have in this thing, my potential, remember we could turn that into energy by having charges interact with it, that's going to generate the same velocity, the same drift speed of current. If I make my wires bigger, I can get more current flowing through it, or I can get more current, if you think in terms of like standing on the side of a beach, there's my river flowing by. If the water's going faster, I see more current going through. If I make the river wider, I see more current going through, and not necessarily faster. So we do have these two different ways that we can think about it. Now, as far as resistors, and there should be no R there, as far as resistors go, then what do they do? Well, it's going to be something that is not as conductive, 
and therefore is going to kind of choke the flow. It will choke the flow before and after, but because this thing charge is conserved, my eye before and my eye after are the same. If I want to put this thing in a circuit, like I've done here, let me draw it neater. We have this jagged line and no, there's no, I do horrible resistors. Uh, there's no requirement on like how many little squigglies to do there, but that is our symbol for resistor. If I want to look at how this thing is gonna go, let's think back to our capacitors. In our capacitors, we said, if I put these two things in series, that the smallest one is gonna dominate and limit the amount of charge that can come out and therefore complete the circuit, right? I'm gonna charge the plates. Well, resistors are gonna do something very similar. The only difference is that my capacitance here we added up is one over, that instead of having like this limited to the smallest amount, what this starts looking like to the circuit is a hill that's getting higher and higher and higher and higher. So if I have water coming through and I keep building up the wall, I have this summative effect of my resistors. So again, in series, there's no other path. So in series, the way we add resistance, I would still want to go for my equivalent resistance. It's gonna be the sum of my resistors. Now we can think about putting these resistors in parallel. So I'm gonna have, let's see, a resistor here and a resistor here. What do you think is gonna happen here? Well, if like this is a Mongo resistor, this one here, let's just call it like 10K ohms. That's not really Mambo, but it's bigger than if I make this one like just five ohms. And I should say that this symbol is ohms. That is the unit for resistance. And Wednesday, I'm going to go into the physical characteristics of resistors. This is just to give you a feel for how we deal with them in circuits and the kind of impact that they will have. So Wednesday, we'll bring it all together and talk a little bit more in detail about the physical makeup of resistors and what they're good for. So if I have something that's super resistive, right? And I'm calling that one big, even though it's not. I'm gonna have current that's gonna come out of my voltage source. And what's gonna happen? It can go up or it can go this away. <clears throat> so it has two choices. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna get less current across this one, path of least resistance. I'm gonna get more current across my five ohm and less current across my 10 ohm or 10 kilo ohm. So in parallel, we add our equivalent resistance as this. One over REQ is gonna equal one over R1 plus one over R2. Cool. Now the same rule applies, but now instead of thinking in terms of charge Q, we can think about our voltage source, our resistor, and our current. And what we give our moving current, did I write it here? I did not, has the symbol of I. I really don't know why they call it I, but we do. And current. So let's label these. This is my potential. This is my resistor. And this is my current. Why do I keep leaving the letters off? The way those things relate is we say that my voltage is going to equal my current times my resistance. 
And just like we did with our capacitors, if I have a system like this, the first thing I'm going to do is plug this in here to figure out how much current can actually flow through this cyst circuit. So we're going to have the exact same approach in solving these, these quantities that exist within the circuit. And I think one of my favorite things about this lab coming up is the ability for you to see exactly how connecting resistors in series and in sequence impact things. I wanted to give you the math tools. I think you use them very little this week. You use them more next week before your lab, but we will definitely deal with this on Wednesday in more organized detail, I should say. So there we have it. We can relate our potential to the flow of current times the resistance. And this handy dandy thing here is called Ohm's Law. We are going to do so many fun things with Ohm's Law in analyzing circuits. And we'll do them primarily for now either with uh, resistors or with capacitors. But we're going to see that when we combine those two, we get this really neat effect out of it that we can take advantage of. Some people ask why, why you have like resistors in the first place. And the, the biggest thing to think about with that is that if I don't have a resistor and I have like this super conductive material, then I have nothing slowing the flow down. With most of our electronic components and pieces, we actually need to regulate the amount of current that can go through those pieces, otherwise it will be damaging to them. So we want resistance for that. And when we get into alternating current, you're going to see that we can use it to like um, do things with um, <laughs> fre frequency modulation. I don't know why that word just left me. So we can do things with frequency modulations. We can create voltage like gates, all sorts of fun things that are more complex. Don't panic if you've never heard of any of those terms. We're just going to kind of build them. And for the most part, the more involved stuff will just kind of hit on in the peripheries, just so you have an idea of what kind of cool things we can do with circuits. Circuits for me are a lot of fun because they're like one big jigsaw puzzle. And they are incredibly ap applicable to like everything. And sadly, in this online world, the one thing we won't get to do is let you play with my rather large collection of circuits and equipment. And you can make all sorts of things just with this experience alone, as far as like creating a rover that moves with a remote control or a lie detector or, or understanding how those... Um, wireless cell phone chargers work. All of that builds on these concepts that we're doing right now. So that's, it's really cool to know. And the one thing that I always tell my students when we first get together is that this is the kind of thing that if there is a zombie apocalypse, you will have a valuable skill. So hold on to this one and we will come back to it on Wednesday. But now you've, you've seen it. This is just how we add our resistors in series in parallel and play with it in lab this week and have fun. I will see you on Wednesday.